thanks for joining us tonight on uh, Revolution Beer. Um, check us out at revolutionandbeer.com. Uh, last week we were talking with our friends from Stone Soup Theater Company. Mallory, thanks for joining us again. No problem. Uh, and our good friends from uh, Democracy Burlesque uh, about theater. And we are in a great place. First of all, I wanted to, to correct something that we, uh, we failed to do uh, last week. And I wanted to thank uh, Charlotte Tr uh, Trousseau from uh, Lost Year is here in Rogers Park uh, for hosting us having us in this great space. And folks, um, if you get a chance, come here. We're at 1511 West uh, West Howard. This is a museum to theater. Even if you don't buy anything or rent anything, just come come down here and troll through this place. Um, it's just an amazing place. So. If you're dealing with writer's block, creative <laughs> block, or any kind of blockage whatsoever, you just need to hide from people for a while, you should come here. Seriously. Exactly. You will be distracted promptly. Exactly. Get lost in lost eras. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got a new beer on the table um, this week. It's, uh, it's a nut brown ale. And AJ, we were talking um, just a few moments ago about um, about food pairings for this beer. Describe the beer a little bit, or, or your impressions of the beer a little bit, and then let's talk food, buddy. Yeah, it's it's a nut brown it's a nut brown ale, and it's it, it has wonderful notes of it's got a wonderful nut note to it. It uh, I think this beer it's it's a, a medium. It's not a very very heavy one, so uh, it'll pair well with a lot of things. I I was thinking like a, a pecan crusted halibut or a uh, even better, I think, would maybe be a roasted butternut squash ravioli with mm -hmm. the uh, toasted brown butter and sage mm -hmm. and a little hazelnuts on top. I think that would really hit the mark mm -hmm. with this. This was like meant for something like that. Yeah, you brought up the sage, and and, and you know, as as um and and folks, when when you're when you're before you you taste a beer, um, use all of your senses here. You know, really really mm -hmm. take a good look at this beer, but breathe in that beer. Just like a fine wine, you wanna you wanna get the character of that, and that actually sets up your taste buds um, for for the full experience of, of the beer. Um, but um, the sage, I think, there's a fruity character to this. Yeah, there is, um, there is, there is, and, and and it's it lends well to the the flavors of of the nuts in the beer. I, I think yeah. something like um, root vegetables, maybe like a parsnip puree. Okay. Um, like a, again, a butternut, or this would go really well, I think, with cheeses as well. Yeah. Like the nut and the yeah. cheeses, mm -hmm. something like a, something like yeah. a dry aged, maybe a, like a gouda, a, a gouda, mm -hmm. a um, a parmesan, mm -hmm. something like that. Maybe, even a risotto, I think that would be really mm -hmm. great with it. Like, yeah. I, 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 I think talking about it, like my my brother, who's a tailgater, uses <laughs> brown ales and porters to inject when he does deep fried turkeys. Nice, yeah. It's amazing. Yeah, we, we, we were talking about that. Inject, inject the turkey with this and then deep fry it in peanut oil. Mm -hmm. That would be insane if we were there, guys. And th this poured actually to a, to a really nice head, uh, which is really important to a beer. I mean, you know, a, a lot of people sort of look, look, at, look at, at heads on beer with a little, little disdain as though they're being cheated. Um, obviously, too much of a head is, is not a good thing. But, but you know, th this poured to about a... Let's say a good half inch cream head. Mm -hmm. uh, that mm -hmm. actually helps hold the carbonation in the beer. Absolutely. That actually helps sustain sustain the beer. And the carbonation for beer is really important to the to that flavor. Yeah. It's insulation. So, so um, very quickly, I'd, I'd like to make a toast to our guests. Um, we have a great conversation here. Um, okay. Continuing the great conversation. And as you look at the glasses, you'll see the lacing on the uh, on the walls. And these glasses are actually clean. Just check the glasses. And you find out the real lacing. Um, yeah. So that's good. And the lacing actually actually says something about the minerals in the beer and the mineral content in the beer, and that's also really important. Um, that the that the mineral content in beer uh, actually is conducive to the yeast um, being viable. Um, Which is why I guess the shape of the glass actually makes a difference. Yes, makes makes a dramatic difference. And in this one, um, I don't know that this is necessarily the best glass for um, for a nut brown ale. Um, but um, this open this open glass is really kind of conducive to bring pulling. Would you do something more like a snifter kind of, or a for for this? Yeah, maybe not not such a wide face. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Like, yeah. Maybe those are from highly carbonated beers. Okay. Like um, a classic pint maybe would, would work well. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, cool. would work if you want a good reference, there's a, there's a really great distributor in town called uh, Louis Glunz Beer Company. Mm -hmm. You can actually uh, just Google um, Glunz Beerables. You'll come to their, their site. They have all yeah. the glasses yep. and everything. Fantastic. Really great yep. for like shopping for people, especially if you know beer drinkers, which we do. We are. Um, check that out because that, that's a definitive source for finding out what's... Uh, Let's well, you guys know where to go for my next birthday. <laughs> yeah. And because beer should not have a gender to it, uh, and because women are women are, are really kind of changing the character of all this. Um, That's kind of cool. The last woman on our panel for for today. Um, you're kind of outnumbered, but um, but nonetheless, um, tell us what you think about the beer. We want to know. Beer is so good. Like you like you said, you were noticing that the sweetness in it. Yeah. And yeah. I was digging the sweetness in it. Also, like I like the. The bit of heaviness in it too. Yeah. I don't know. That's why I love Guinness because like, it's kind of like a meal in a, in a glass. It's a much different beer character yeah. beer than we had last. Year. I gotta say, I'm a fan of any drink that is bread and wine together. I don't know what it is in me that really uh, has an affinity for that. I don't hey, hey, know right? about your identity too much. We gotta yeah. change your city. But like yeah, root vegetables and turkey, it's sort of a nice sort of Christmassy, oh, wintery yeah. kind mm -hmm. of yeah. thing. Yeah. It's a snuggly beer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and actually, I, I, you know, at the time we're recording this, it's a little chill yet. I, I, you know, chillier now than it will be when... Uh, I'm in a toga. Airs. You don't have to tell yeah. me. Yeah. It's going to be Bill's new season by the time this original Airs, but, yeah. I think it's kilts that they didn't wear underwear or something underneath that you got. But oh, no comment. No. <laughs> moving on. <laughs> moving on. Uh, AJ, I want to thank you for joining us. And, and, you, and folks, so much, um, check out um, check out our website, uh, revolutionofbeer.com, for more on AJ's great recipes. Mm -hmm. um, or you have a website. I do. Um, AlanJFrancisco.com. Or yeah. you can find me on Facebook at Francisco Catering. So, guys, thank you so much. Thanks, AJ. Oh, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Beer, buddy. Cheers. This is the way to do TV. <laughs> yeah. I just gotta go find the other uh, store guard. And we are going to bring in Carl Lindbergh. Carl, get in here and bring your beer, buddy. I've got one. All right. Yeah. And and he's going to do the entire show um, in a British accent. No, we're not going to do that. <laughs> we'll see how I mean, you need, you need to the table. All right. <laughs> yeah. 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 He does have height. Does. And, and, and 20, the 20 British people at home watching this go, uh, <laughs> <laughs> American shit that but it does look great on you. Yeah, Thank so. you. That's Thank quite you. the quite the mm -hmm. outfit. It is. I do what I can. <laughs> I wear what I'm told. <laughs> We're representing a lot of your I'm wearing well, a bar, so pretty close. There's gotta be a piano in this place somewhere. Can you do something? <laughs> <laughs> or sing some out of hands, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> The last week we were kind of talking more about the about the mechanics of or the inspirations between um, two really really um, dramatically I don't want to say different but um, dramatically um, dissimilar um, ways of approaching um, political and social discourse. Um, we've got um, Stone Soup Theater Company um, who who comes to it in, in sort of a quieter, more intimate way. Um, you know, with a, with a longer view with with a, you know, with a with a longer story um, that that people need to come to an issue. Um, I think almost almost on their own. So you sort of set the stage um, and and build um, build the environment, and then people have to make that that bridge to what you're trying to communicate um, on their own, um, which I think is a, the part of the power of theater um, is that. It, it's 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 much more in intimate than say television or radio, um, because you're on stage. Obviously, people know that you're on stage. Um, you don't have that that illusion of, of an entire world. People need to f to create that illusion in in their own mind. Yeah, is that is that pretty accurate? Well, we call it a suspension of disbelief. Sus suspension, of disbelief. right? And so the audience. The goal is to create a world that is consistent enough where the audience is able to suspend their disbelief and yeah. go on that journey with us and use their imagination. And I think that's always the goal yeah. in theater because a yeah. movie fills in the blanks that they're doing all the work for us. And it's always interesting to me in theater that you never have anybody go, hey... You're not really in the mountains. You're not, you know, I mean, the, the, you just accept it. You they do if it's not good. That's, yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, 
especially kids theater, if you're oh, yeah. performing for children, <laughs> yeah. they will call BS on you oh, yeah. faster yes. than yes. anyone. Sound yeah. design is really important. At yeah. yeah. And yeah. then on the other side, we we have we have a more visceral, I, I guess, I guess a more um, a punchier sort of aspect to yeah, the, uh, the, certainly. The yeah, I, it definitely in terms on the on the political end, we tend to, you know, we're very upfront about it. It's in, it's in our title, you know, Democracy Burlesque, only the politics are naked, you know, like... We're so not you're not actually naked. naked? No, no. Except for like 2% of the time. So. Which is an amazing 2%. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. Uh, the, on, on, on the other hand, we have the critical need to be funny because there yep. ain't nothing harsher in the world than trying to be funny and not being funny. Mm -hmm. Well, and, you know, when you're dealing with, part of our goal is to use comedy to deal with things that are actually inherently unfunny. Mm -hmm. And as a result, like, it, it seems ant antithetical, but the reality is, is that the ability to laugh at something actually gives you the hope of change. Yeah. You know, yeah. comedy, I find, provides a sense of hope that if you're able to laugh at, if you're able to laugh at all in the face of something that is really pr troubling, it gives you just enough distance to be able to feel like you can actually do something about it. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm not the first one to say that. I feel like uh, Mel Brooks is very well known for talking about with the producers in Springtime for Hitler and how it was necessary to mock Hitler and that it was Americans' ability to mock Hitler that allowed everybody to feel like it was possible to defeat him. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, and to defeat that that monstrosity that, mm -hmm. that was out there. And we, we talked about in the first segment of the show about the roots of democracy burlesque coming out of the Iraq War and the George W. Bush administration and Frankly, this need to, we're either going to laugh or we're going to throw bricks through windows. <laughs> so since most of us can't afford to replace the windows, we better at least figure out a way to laugh. And as we sort of transitioned to the Obama, to, to Obama, it was interesting. We were, I was at the point where once Obama got elected, I was thinking, gee, are we done? Yeah. And then the two things that happened were so one, bad. well, it's funny, the thing that happened that really made me go, no, we're not, was the Rod Blagojevich indictment, yep. which you then realized, you know, both sides are going to be doing this, and, you know, hosannas to the twin uh, totems of uh, John Stewart and Stephen Colbert, who have finally shown that there is an audience. Yep. that understands political uh, humor uh, yeah. and wants it yeah, and will come to it and will support it, which wasn't always the case. Yeah. But it's there now, and here we come. And the goal is to get people to actually laugh when they're throwing the bricks through the window, right? <laughs> That's the point. Well, you just I, run faster if you've got You know, I would rather, you know, I feel like our goal is not so much to throw bricks through windows because that's very short term. Our goal is... Nor is, do we pay a post bail. Our goal is to replace the shopkeeper. Right. You know, okay. it takes more time, it takes more effort, but, you know, somebody who is a purveyor of things that are bad for the community, they can replace their windows. Mm -hmm. If nobody will, will buy from them, right. and you can provide somebody else, I mean, it's very capitalist of me, but, it, you know, like, uh, I, I do feel that there is a certain cultural market and, and quite frankly there are times when the people who want to throw the bricks through the windows also need to be laughed at yes yeah. true. and Absolutely. so it's very true you know taking taking something too seriously or not or idea. thinking yeah. that's going to be the only <laughs> solution <laughs> or that's all you want to do as if that will be a solution mm -hmm. yeah. sorry destruction not. is not an, yeah. a solution yeah. in of itself yeah. Sometimes it's necessary, but it's not a solution. And that is Eric, uh, very quickly, that, that's Eric Parsons, the creative director <laughs> yeah. from Democracy for Less. Before we get too far, I want to make sure everybody knows who's talking yeah, here. I, um, just just, just for, the, for the court case, uh, <laughs> <laughs> sitting next to him is Joe Fedorko. Joe, you are the, you're, you're the founder. I'm the founder. Um, and we apparently may need a, an attorney. So apparently. if you're an attorney who would like to be involved in Democracy Burlesque, you can write something. Above and beyond us at info at democracy Above and beyond the imagery we have here. Yeah. Well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what more do you need? Yeah. <laughs> Across from us is Carl Lindbergh, uh, who's a director 
um, for uh, Stone Soup Theater Company. Yep. Director, yeah. actor, actor, artistic associate. Brilliant. I'm Brilliant. on the outskirts. Exactly. And, uh, and, and a fine dresser. And, and, oh, so, yeah. a snappy, snappy. And our, and our gypsy for the day, Mallory Green, That's joining me. us again this week. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Mallory. You are, you, you are the... Yeah, you were the um, I'm the marketing director for Stone Soup. Yep. Uh, right. Right. You were going to ask it, so it looked like you had something to yes, ask. Oh, oh sorry. yeah. Or to say. Well, mm-hmm. what you guys were just saying was that your approach is that, oh, we found out, especially through, you know, Stephen Colbert and, um, uh, Stuart. Thank Stuart. you. Yeah. That there is an audience that mm-hmm. that enjoys things that are political and that they yeah. are like, I can see this and I can relate to it and I can do something really about it. Mm-hmm. I think with Stone Soup, one of our approaches is that maybe people don't know. A lot of people have no idea. Whether it's you are choosing to be ignorant, you are choosing to like not really know what's going on around you, or maybe Mm -hmm. like you were just like, I don't know, I was, where I just graduated from college, and I'm like, I moved to Chicago, and this is, I'm going to explore and have an adventure, and you don't And Chicago's such a horrible place for politics, good God. (laughs) (laughs) Well, no! You'll put us out of a job if it's fixed. (laughs) It's very easy to be self-involved, and I think that's also (laughs) not to... Not to be mean to people who are in their early twenties, but that's a that's a part of being in your early twenties that you're very self involved. And I think I think some people some people can be a little a little afraid of going after some some sources of power, mm-hmm. sure. um, or and, not be afraid enough. Right. I mean, exactly. Right. Yeah. Exactly. But there there's a there's a line there between going after sources of power or going after things that are that are sensitive to the community. How do you guys know when when you've crossed the line or when you're coming to that line? Hmm. I think that for us, we've been working a lot on just visceral, um, a feeling. You have to go with yeah. your gut, and you have to you have to stay focused on what your goal is, what your your goal yeah. is for yeah. the theater company, for you know each particular production, and then sort of follow your gut and and have the ideas that like okay, you want this to be inclusive. You want everyone to know, um, to feel welcome to come and see what you're doing yeah. but you also don't want to be too watered down so that you the nice thing about stone soup theater project is it is very community oriented right, right? so right. it's very focused on the northeast neighborhoods yeah. of chicago mm-hmm. so the issues that we're focusing on are more specific i mm-hmm. think mm-hmm. and so yeah. there's a pretty direct feedback that we get yeah. right? Right. through right. surveys from productions or through feedback from educational um, work through all the things that we're doing is very hands-on um, with the community. So I think there is some direct feedback with, hey, this is going, we like that you guys are doing this with us. We mm-hmm. understand that you're doing this for this reason. Thank yeah. you for trying to bring this issue to light. So there are some direct things that happen. So there's a little, there, there, there is a little bit of market orientation there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I, you always have to, you know, I feel like any artist in any way has to be mindful of their audience. Yes. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Democracy Burlesque, while we do have material that I'm sure uh, reads well to pretty much anybody who may see it in the U.S., we are specifically a Chicago company. Yeah. We, you know, so therefore we, and we know who our audience is. And so some pieces that we have may actually offend other folks who you know, are not of the right, of, are, who are not part of our audience. Sure. Our audience is a Chicago audience, which comes to the table with certain um, knowledge and certain ignorances. Mm-hmm. Certain baggage. And so our goal is not, is to inform their ignorances and play to their knowledge. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then, you, you, know, you know, when you talked about where, how do you know when you go over, I think when you write, certainly when you write comedy, you don't know until you do. Yep. Yeah. We sure. have had, Lots and lots of internal arguments in developing scripts, yep. in rehearsals of how, where is that edge? How far should it go? Do we show an audience? Um, if it doesn't make us uncomfortable, then we probably should put it on stage. Well, I, I'm remembering. That's a, that's a I, tough line, though. Yeah, well, it's funny. I was on Twitter. Yeah, I still don't quite get Twitter at times, but I was following during the Academy Awards. And something really interesting happened where The Onion decided to try to make a joke at the expense of the nine-year-old actress yeah. from Beasts of the mm-hmm. Southern Wild who was mm-hmm. nominated for an Oscar. And the joke didn't work. They they pushed it too far. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And 
a lot of people were bemoaning the onion for going, but to me, you know, you don't know because that's yeah. a, that was a very fine You're line really with that particular joke, too. And, and, it's often, and, and, and yeah. then you, yeah. write, you know, something from when you're writing comedy, it's the difference between offending people and finding that joke that will put somebody on the floor for a half hour convulsing in laughter yeah. that they will never forget. Right. Well, and that, it, yeah. and that is often politics aside. That's, you know, when you're right. writing comedy, yeah. I think you're yeah. always looking for that. So maybe if they had written it differently, it would have been funny. And yeah. then people would have okay with it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I would argue yeah. that the fact that, and something we've talked about is that, like, with satire, oftentimes you have to be upfront about the fact that you're going over the line in order for people yeah. to understand that it's satire. Sure. Um, yeah. Some of the stuff that gets sold, it gets excused as satire, oftentimes is more offensive because they go part way there. So there's an ambiguity over whether they actually believe what they're saying or they're presenting an ugly an ugly idea. And then when you have the spokesperson for the NRA say the solution to gun violence in schools is to put more guns in schools, that makes our job harder. If he's going to be that absurd, as we propose the ninja amendment, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And which, a, which a ninja should be in every school because you know you got a guy with a gun, he's going to take lunch breaks, he's going to take a nap, or get yeah, second graders the break, but a ninja, the ninja's coming out of the ceiling, he's coming out of the garbage can, he's coming out of the locker. You don't know. And Welcome to ninjas, a TV writing session. Ninjas yeah. 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 Well, I, I would say, you know, I, I mentioned before, uh, like in terms of, we actually include as sort of part of our mantra is offending with purpose since 2006. Yeah. Uh, my goal is that I am there, of course, to make people feel something and hopefully to be offended. People should be offended by the fact that something is horrible in our society. Mm -hmm. They shouldn't be offended. My goal was not to offend them just to make them uncomfortable. Yeah. My goal was yeah. to offend, is to show them something that is in and of itself offensive and that we're saying, this is offensive. We're trying to bring their attention. And we're bringing their exactly. attention. And especially and with, and with, with what it. you guys do, yeah. which seems to be you know, writing plays right, in, literally in the neighborhood that mm -hmm. they live in. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you're so close to, you're, in a lot of ways, you're a lot closer to the edge than anything we could ever try to do. Thank you, because I, I wanted to bring up 21. Yeah. You guys are doing schl uh, schlock and awe. Yeah. Um, you guys are, are stepping in tw to 21, written by a friend of ours, Chris Patterson, mm -hmm. who's actually who's actually gone through um, yes. through issues of violence on the street and, and right. drug dealing and all of jail and, and, and everything and really come out on top and, and, and is, is, be is beginning, you know, is, is trying to make a difference here on the street, particularly mm -hmm. in Rogers Park. Right. Um, there are some tough issues there. How do you guys know when you've gone too far, and when you've, and 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 what's far enough to really to really communicate that or speak to that issue? I think it comes from the truth. What yeah, is what yeah. is too far if it's the truth? It's not like yeah. we're making this up. This is what happened, and so yeah. you know, there, I, I feel okay. like especially with okay. twenty one, there's no too far. Okay. I, yeah, I, like I said, offending with purpose is like you can't be. It, you know, if it's factual, so what if it's offensive? It's like, that's actually the point. Right, and if it's offensive, then right, that's the yeah. point. That's the You're supposed to be offended yeah, yeah. by the fact that this is honest and well, true. There, there's, mm -hmm. offensive, there's offensiveness in the idea of, as I heard on a talk show recently, you need to call bigots out for being bigots, and if they're uncomfortable, yeah. they need to stop their behavior. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. one form yeah. of offensiveness, and the offensiveness is because you're calling out the truth. And that it. person is uncomfortable because... Hopefully. It, the the <laughs> reason I think they're uncomfortable is because they're not willing to uh, approach change. They're not willing to make a change in themselves that... Yeah. yeah. Right? We are attempting to shed light on truths or share truths yeah. Yeah. in order to foster it's, community. And I think absolutely. the people who are offended are the, usually the people who and, are... But then sometimes they need to be offended. Because Good. without yeah. being offended, the change <laughs> doesn't happen. Yeah. And yeah. so, in our case, we try to buttress that with a laugh or two. Yeah. With you, again, with what Stone Soup does, in some ways, you're a lot, again, you're a lot closer to the bone than what we do. Mm -hmm. And so, I'm wondering... You know, if, I wanted to get Brian in here oh, real, okay. real quick. We've we, we got a couple minutes left, but... Yeah, yeah no, I, I, um, I think when you're looking at sort of 
everyone talks about the mainstream culture, um, and you know, I'm, I'm fine with the idea of the industrial cultural complex. We probably said it before. It's, um, I love that. This is a you know, this is a, a sedation mechanism. You know what I mean? This is this is a this is a, a thing that's meant to drive an economy um, on very, um, I would say, almost superficial um, goals. And uh, often we find, you know, our, our networks, our close networks, our communities getting sort of um, sidestepped or, you know, we're just getting divided more and more down to the individual level through social media, through online communication. It's all mediated now, it's all tracked. Um, so what, in, to the topic of people like John Stewart, Stephen Colbert, and things like that, you know, um, I enjoy watching that stuff, right? Um, a lot of people do, but they are sort of, they're picking from everywhere. Like they're, they're on a macro scale. And um, yeah, anyone from that vantage point can uh, point out the absurdism of, of, you know, national politics or whatever's happening. Because they're also commenting on the mechanics of yeah. the media and the commentary. Right, yeah. however, mm -hmm. um, to a certain degree, those shows are also uh, a form of pacification because they are distracting people and providing for an escape instead of engaging in their communities. Except that, except that there have been so studies that, in particular, well, using Colbert and Stewart particularly, I mean, they tend, those people that watch those tend to be very close followers of the news and politics. But how does it equate to action? And they, uh, my guess is there's a lot of those because it's certainly true with I think people that come into a DD crowd and probably so they are probably already engaged yeah. and one of the reasons they're attracted to Daily Show and Colbert is because they're giving voice to an opinion they don't see on the major networks I think that did it Holy it's cow, another half hour. Oh, oh, yeah. oh my god. Oh my god. You want to call it? Yeah, I think that's last call, everybody. It's last call. Last call. Everybody. Cheers, Cheers to the holidays. Cheers. All 365 of them. Yeah. Happy, folks, happy folks, birthday. we're gonna have we'll have all the uh, all the uh, uh, links and contacts. Um, she could possibly for both watch. Democracy Burlesque and Stone Soup Theater Company um, on the uh, on the screen here. Um, it'll also be at 900poundgorilla.wordpress.com uh, and it'll also be at revolutionandbeer.com. Um, so we'll have that available for you. Please get engaged. Please please help these groups um, to um, do something good for the community. Say some, say some, some good things. Um, Go see a show. And support, support local theater really important and it's a hell of a lot better than cable TV. Before you throw a brick through a window. And whatever you do, uh, get involved, get engaged, change the world, but for God's sakes, do it with a decent beer in your hand. We'll see you next week. Hail Bill Cheers, Turk! Everybody. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs>